they've won, right? It, it's almost, you know, I, I hearken it back to, to my days at Butler. Um, that's what like good programs are. Doesn't matter who comes through there. Doesn't matter who the coach is. They find a way to be really good, um, find their way to either getting into the tournament or being on the verge of getting into the tournament. And they have some older guys that are established. Um, their best player, Corey Hightower, is a really good player, really talented player. So we have to be ready for him right out of the gates. Um, so there's no easing into the season. So, you know, you look up, and I've been telling our guys how good these guys are. So I don't know if our fans quite understand it. I don't know if the Legion of Blue or whoever else is coming to the game is going to realize how good this team is. But it's going to be a great test for us uh, right out of the gate, which uh, we should be ready for. We'll start with Mark Brennan. Hey, Micah, thanks for your time today. No problem. And we're all going to have our hands up. You know we have to do that. But, uh, hey, uh, have you settled on a starting lineup? Is it anything you could share with us? And, you know, short of that, what sort of rotation are you looking at this early in the season? How many guys can you realistically use? Thanks. Yeah, no problem, Mark. Um, I still don't know. I ask these guys every single day at practice or after practice, our staff just kind of, I think we have a group where you can switch some things up um, based on how the other team, how you align with them. Um, you know, I, I'm not as as big on who's starting the game. I'm more interested in who ends it for us and who helps us win it. So I know Jalen Pickett's starting. I can tell you that right now. And Seth Lundy, right? I think both of those guys have played at a high, high level on both ends of the court. Um, so we need them out there for as long as possible. From there, it's a crapshoot. Um, you know, we got – we're going to practice today. We're going to practice Saturday. We're going to practice Sunday. And, you know, hopefully they tell me who's starting by the time we get there. If not, that's either a really good problem to have or that's a bad problem to have because there's a little separation. I don't know, like, how many guys – like, how deep we'll go. Um, it's – you know, it, it's – I think the freshmen are all have the ability to help us, but like one of them, like maybe somebody doesn't play. Like if I just, I'm just pulling the name out of my hat, but like maybe Kanye doesn't play against winter, but he's got a chance to turn around and play and give us really good minutes. The next game against Loyola. Like, I think it'll be that way until those guys get established. Right. Like, you know, we're gonna have to live through some of their mistakes as young guys, but. Uh, they all have the ability to come in and do something special. And um, I told them all, I'm going to get them a T-shirt that Jalen Brown, uh, Jalen Brown's juice brand. He's got a shirt that says, the energy is about to shift. And I said, when those guys check into the game, that's what needs to happen. Everybody in the gym needs to know that the energy is about to pick up when they get in the game. So um, whether it's all four of them, five of them guys we got five freshmen whether it's all five of them or none of them you know whatever they're doing the energy better be changing nate bauer hey mike how are you i'm great um what does caleb do for you and how has he developed uh over the last year you know what he um the the biggest thing with caleb is he's he's finished thinking right like he was a Caleb's a thinker he loves to know exactly what he needs to do um and process it and then he can kind of get to his decision um how we want to do things offensively and defensively you got to play off instincts you got to play fast um I think him being here now an extra year same as Seth same as Dalian there is no more thinking um, Caleb's just playing fast. He's just playing off instincts. And that's been the biggest change. Like he's had the ability to shoot the basketball. Um, he's, he's confident in his shot. He works like he works just as much as, you know, a guy like an Andrew Funk, who's a great shooter. Like Caleb puts in the same amount of time. Like he and Dalian are always down there getting shots up together. So him being more confident in what we're doing, him being more confident in his role, 
And, you know, he plays really hard, plays really hard. And there's no, like, um, there's no substitute for that. He went on a trip this summer overseas, he and Dalian both. And um, one of the guys that I coached at Purdue, DJ Bird, was their head coach on that trip. And after every game, he texted me, hey, man, Caleb is over here dominating on the glass. Like, he is rebounding like a madman. The very next day, hey, man, Caleb played great. He's over here rebounding, 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 rebounding. And that was one of the things we talked about last year. If you want to play, you got to help us rebound. Um, and he took that to heart. And he's kind of continued to do it throughout this fall. John Sauber. Hey, Micah, how, how is someone like Andrew Funk going to help Jalen pick it out? Uh, you know, you, you talk a lot about, we've talked a lot about how his role changes from what he was at Bucknell, but how's he going to open up the game for the rest of the guys who, who maybe need that little bit of extra spacing? Yeah, uh, just gravity, right? Like, you know, you're, you're worried about a guy that can shoot the ball like that. Like you have to have constant awareness as a defense of where that guy is, right? And I've, you know, had the pleasure of coaching guys like that before, right? And, then, you know, just recently, like a guy like Sasha Stefanovic, you know, Purdue's got really good big guys, but you better know where Sasha Stefanovic is, right? Because three's more than two, um, just in case you guys didn't know that. Uh, but, like, you better find him. You better know where he is. And now you're just taking one more guy, his attention away from what's happening. So now, like, that little bit of space of, hey, I'm standing right in between these two guys. I probably want to inch out closer and be closer to this guy that's out here shooting threes, which allows Jalen the space, which allows Cam the space, Seth, whoever it may be, um, to open up lanes to get to the rim, open up lanes to to drive it, score in the paint more. I think that helps us, right? We didn't, we, we didn't have the ability to score in the paint as much as we needed to last year. Um, having a guy that can really shoot it opens up the paint for more drives, more chances to attack. Daniel Gallon. Uh, <clears throat> Mike, uh, going off that, that question about Andrew, um, you know, he was named a, a team captain earlier to, to have a transfer come in and make that sort of an impression on his teammates. What did Andrew Funk do to, you know, what did he do, I guess, to, to earn that role? Nothing special. Like, like he, he, he just fit right in. You know, he didn't come in. The one thing, you know, when we recruited him, he never asked, like, how much am I going to play? How many shots am I going to get? Like, he never asked any of those questions. And he kind of started um, in the summer when we were doing all the weightlifting stuff and we were doing everything as a team. Like, he was one of the hardest working guys that we had. Uh, so he has the ability that he can lead by example. Because he's a like, he's a he's an unbelievable student, like he's an excellent student. That um, he's doing everything you ask him to do off the court. He's doing everything you ask him to do on the court. He's one of our hardest workers, um, but he he also has a way about him where teammates connect with him because he's easy to talk to. He's willing to take his time to help the freshmen and help everybody else. So that kind of like you know humbleness as a guy that scored a bunch of points in his career, but also that kind of servant attitude really fit into to what we were looking for. So he was an easy pick for, for us to name a captain. Andrew Clay. Hey coach. Uh, I know a lot of people think a good team is easier to coach. Uh, I know, you know, that's not necessarily how it all works. How is coaching this year kind of different from the way it was coaching last year? I um, like I genuine, I genuinely enjoy every single day with this group. Right, I still get, I still get mad. Right, I still get upset. That's just who I am. To my what my personality is. I'm a grumpy old man. Uh, but like, I love being around these guys. Like just just the work that they put in on a daily basis. Um, you know, just right before I came back here to do the Zoom, um, I just walked and looked over the edge of the practice court. And there's um, Cam Winters on one end of the court, 
Kanye Clary's on the side go and Pickett's on the other end of the court, right? And that is constant. It's constant. Dalian was here earlier. Um, Evan and Jamil were both here earlier. Like these guys love to work, right? But there's also a parade of people coming from the court upstairs to the office to watch film. Um, so they love to work. They love to learn. They want to get better. And then they all push each other. Um, and then when it's over and they compete like crazy. And then when it's over, like it's over. Uh, so like, it's like a, a, a coach's dream of what you're looking for. Um, so, you know, we, we have like, we have guys that enjoy being around each other, that enjoy pushing each other, that enjoy working. Um, so every day I, I like being there with them um, because I know what they're doing. It it gives me great energy to to go down there and do everything that I can to make sure that they're successful. We have time for two more. Let's go Spencer Ripchick and then Jonathan Drager. Go ahead, Spencer. Hey, Micah. Thanks for doing this. <clears throat> yes, sir. Let's do uh, it. So uh, my question is, like, last year you opened at home. What did you take away from that? It's taking you back a little bit. What, what did you learn from that first game last year playing at home? And now this year you're playing at home for the first game again. I was um, – I can't even remember last year. I was so nervous to <laughs> start that game. Um, I'll be the same way this year. I'll be anxious. Like, but there's different reasons. Like, I want to see um, – I want to see what we look like. I want to test ourselves against a good team. Um, I want to see what our environment looks like, right? There's a lot of people walking around telling me how excited they are about basketball. Like, show me, right? Show up, sit in the stands and cheer for us. Like, I, I want to see that. Um, so that that's the biggest part of it is getting started. It, it's the season. It feels so far away when – last season ends or, you know, when summer school starts and your guys get here and then when the fall starts and, you you know, then you start practice, it just feels forever until you start to go. But the calendar has been moving really quickly. Um, so I'm just anxious to get going. I'm just anxious to see uh, what we look like. Like, I think we are – I think we're much further ahead offensively than where we were. Um you know, I think we're catching up defensively. I think we're in a good spot defensively. I don't think we're going to be perfect. I think we really struggled early in the year defensively also. But there's some things that we struggled with early that we tried to address now going into this year so we don't have those same mistakes early on. But um, I feel like we're much further ahead in terms of what we have in, like the amount of stuff we have in, how we're like getting a chance to practice it. Um, the amount of things that we've been able to do in late game situations. So um, now it's, you know, put up or shut up, I guess. We've got a final question to Jonathan Drager. Hey, Micah, thanks for doing this. Yeah, no problem. So two scrimmages in, you faced off against Rhode Island and George Mason. How has the... Allegedly, uh, allegedly. allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> How has the team chemistry really been a plus towards heading into a game like Winthrop who you have high praise for? Yeah, it, it's – yeah, I think those those scrimmages were helpful. Um, you know, sometimes it's not always – like the score doesn't matter, right? Like I, I went into the – both of those games, I don't – like I'm a competitor. Like I want to win. But I wanted to work on stuff. So, you know, our first scrimmage, we played so many different lineups in the first 20 minutes that, I mean, we self-sabotaged ourselves, right? Like, which is part, you know, part of my doing, part a reason why we do these kind of alleged scrimmages that we did. Um, you know, you're trying different stuff. Like, we also got on the bus and rode for three, three and a half hours on the day of a game, like, you know, so if something happens like the Wisconsin game again, we're prepared for it. Um, but, you know, we kind of – we tried to get out of our comfort zone. We tried to change some things up and do some different things. Um, so the score is not always important. It's what you get out of those scrimmages. And I thought we got a lot of stuff out of both of them in terms of 
seeing different styles that we that you know different than how we play. So now we have to adjust where you know game one's not the first time we see a different style. Um, and then it takes us five minutes into the game to adjust. Now we've seen two completely different styles that will be ready for anything. Um, we got a bunch of late game situations in. We got a bunch of having different combinations play together, um, working through foul trouble, wh whatever it may be. So um, I think we're ready. You know, we still got a couple of days of practice to fine tune everything, but those those scrimmages got us ready. And I think that's that's the job of of those. And uh, you know, no matter what, no matter what happens, no matter what the score is, um, it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. I think I was looking like Gonzaga got beat by like 30. I don't think they're gonna cancel their season. They're gonna be pretty good. Awesome. Thank you, coach. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you Monday. Thank you guys. Thanks, Michael. Monday. Thanks, Coach. Okay, thanks, Chelsea.